course of three weeks, our community was living in terror. Mothers, fathers, sons and daughters were gunned down for no reason. These are the faces of our neighbors innocently killed while just going about their everyday lives. Sunday will mark the 20th anniversary of the DC Beltway sniper attacks carried out by John Allen Muhammad and Lee Boyd Malvo. Tonight, our Bruce Lashan goes into our files and speaks with one of the people who struggled to stop the killings. It is important that we do this without anyone else getting hurt. Look at the angle. This way and that way, it came from right up there. For people just out doing everyday things. I heard a big bang because it was right by my head. It was a new kind of terror. You go out in the morning, you don't never know if you're going to make it back. <laughs> Killers stocking gas stations, parking lots, schools. We're dealing with someone shooting from a distance. Sudden death from phantom murderers. A lady at a bus stop, a guy mowing the lawn. The pressure was on for ATF firearms examiner Walter Dandridge. Essentially the whole world watching. To pinpoint the possible weapon. This bullet went through and through, through the tie into the shirt. Dandridge honed in on three potential rifles. If you've seen anybody who may have weapons similar to this, 222, the 22, 250, and the Remington 223. But just like the false lead that had cops stopping white vans and box trucks, narrowing the list of rifles the killers might be using left investigators still struggling to find them. Don't say anything, but where are the people that are causing the killing in your area? It was a call from Malvo demanding $5 million, a tip from a guy who knew Muhammad from the Army, and an alert motorist that led to the killers sleeping at a rest stop in Frederick County, inside the old Chevy Caprice, a Bushmaster 223 rifle. The firing pin strikes the primer, the bullet travels down the barrel, it picks up land, land impressions. Dandridge traced the unique microscopic marks left on the bullet as it tore through the barrel of the rifle at more than 2,000 miles an hour. So we would mount the bullets on a comparison microscope. We put them in phase. In front of two juries, he testified that the rifle found with Malvo and Muhammad was the same one used to shoot a dozen different people. There was no question that this firearm of the more than 123 that we looked at uh, was the correct firearm. Muhammad was executed in 2009. Death. The sentence is death. Death for John Muhammad. Malvo just won a new sentencing hearing for his six life terms in Maryland. And he's hoping for parole from his two life terms in Virginia. Some of those who helped arrest and convict the snipers. Unfortunately, for the last 30 years, in this field, I've been making a living off of people being shot. Still struggle with the memories. Bruce Lashan, WUSA 9.